If you've never undone the bolts for the engine cover, you want to use some creep oil to help loosen those up. You can then remove the bolts with a T30 socket. Eventually, you want to tap the extension with a hammer to make sure that it's seated properly. The next step is to remove the four bolts holding down the ECU. For that, we are going to use a 10 mm socket. Now we want to undo the connectors and we actually take out the ECU a little bit from its base and then push down on these notches right there and try to lift up the lever above it. And once you've done that, you can use a hammer or two fingers to basically tap or push back those two notches coming out of the connector. And you will notice some sort of resistance and then you just can tap them again or actually can pull from behind and by this way take out the connector safely without any damage. Set aside the two connectors to clear up some space for the heat shield and then proceed by removing the charge jack control valve. That can be done by the use of a flathead screwdriver to pry out the notch and then slowly wiggle out the control valve of its position. Now it's time to remove a bracket which is held in place by two nuts. For that you want to use a long 10 mm socket. Don't waste your time using a short one. One of the nuts is hidden under the intake hose and the other one is very obvious on the left side. Make sure to use an extension for easier removal of the nuts, otherwise you really have to cramp in your fingers down there. Once the nut has been removed, you can now lift out the brace. Sometimes the clamp is going to be in your way. In that case, you can either rotate the clamp of the intake hose or you can pry it out. Next up, we're going to install the heat sheet itself and we're going to put it in there with the face up or with the foam side down, to put it this way. And we're going to secure it in place by the use of our rubber bearings. There's no need to torque them down properly. You're just going to use your hand and that's more than fine. the metal bracelet, we now want to elevate it by extending those two studs. And depending on the model here, we either want to use those 25mm spacers, or if you have a pre-facive model, we actually want to use them six nuts, and we are going to use three of them for each stud, obviously. And first up, we are going to you know, tighten them down by hand. That's absolutely fine. And now we're going to use our ratchet to tighten down everything properly as it should be and then carry on to the next installation step. To install our ECU we're going to use those Allen bolts and we're going to need a 4mm Allen wrench for that. We're actually going to start in the top left corner and then continue at the bottom so please do not install the top right bolt yet because that one we're going to do in a minute. Now we're going to install our ground cable and we're going to connect it to the left stud of a bracelet and also put our old ground cable in place at the top right corner of the ECU. And we're going to connect both of these ground cables now, the old and the new one, with a single bolt where they are supposed to go. Don't panic if it doesn't tighten up. You actually need your wrench now to push and turn at the same time. Only this way the ground cable is really gonna tighten down. Reseat the connectors. And 
and finally tighten down the ground cable with the nuts which were in place before. Now we want to put the charge control valve back in position and for that we're gonna bend this piece down a little with our hands. This actually helps to install it a bit easier. And now just put it back in place and push it down. It should slide in there and you should hear a little click sound and then you know you are back in position. You should now test if the car starts or not. In our case it does, so we have done everything right. And the very, very last step is to put back on the engine cover.